okay. Okay, let's resume from where we left. Um, keep the unity of the spirit. Uh, strive, do everything you can to keep the unity. <clears throat> um, and the next section is everyone works. So the three important family practices is what? Walk in brotherly love. Okay, uh, and then keep the unity and fellowship of the spirit. And then finally, everyone works. So just like in a household, except for children or kids, uh, they are doing their own thing. Uh, the adults are expected to work, right? If someone is not working, then uh, in Indian languages, <laughs> there are many different words you can use to, to describe a person who is not working, <laughs> isn't it? Uh, which is not very nice. <laughs> so just like the household, uh, everyone, in, in the house of God are commanded to work, right? I mean, just the very commission, uh, the great commission is not a great suggestion. We treat it like that, isn't it? Uh, if you want, you can go and make disciples. And if you want, you can baptize them. If you want, you can chill, you know. The remaining time, you can just peace out, Netflix and chill. No, so go. That in itself is a verb, isn't it? Uh, it means action. So you go and do things. So everyone in the house of God are also expected because we are all, we've all been given a certain responsibility according to our talents and gifts. Um, so let's read this scripture. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah, like uh, everyone works. Uh, are we talking about uh, work uh, towards the church or work? In general. So here in this context, it is in the house of God. Oh. Yeah, yeah. But that also. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, in this scripture from two to five, Galatians chapter six, <clears throat> it says, Bear one another's burdens, that is weight, load, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one examine his own work, effort, toil as in an occupation, and then he will have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. For each one shall bear his own load as well. Okay, now there are two things. First one, it starts, verse two, it starts off by saying, bear one another. Okay, and then finally it ends up by saying, for each one shall bear his own load. <laughs> so uh, what are you trying to say, Paul? <clears throat> Another, isn't it? Uh, so you can't just say, for example, again, and as a church staff, if another team from the church office needs my help, uh, I'm not going to say, Is it, I, hello, don't you know I'm the worship pastor? This is, I have nothing to do with it. This thing. Why are you coming and bothering me? No. But I'm, we are in this together. It's not like, okay, it's my team, it's my thing. It's, you know, uh, 19 different teams make to work together to make one service happen. 19 different teams at APC on one Sunday. Right? And so everybody say, you know, we can't just say, okay, I'm not going to help you, but I'm going to help you so that we can accomplish what, the, you know, like a greater purpose is. Are you with me? Right? We we have to help one another. We we help one another. We uh, we you know we we bear each other's burden. However, having said that, each individual should take responsibility for for their work. Okay, you can't always be dependent on help, as in. People will be willing to help, but then if that is your go-to response, that I do this anyways, you know, Anand will be there to do this. Uh, you know, why should I? <laughs> you get what I'm saying? That means you're not being accountable for your responsibility, for your work. Are you with me? So if it is your responsibility to set up the roster for the worship team, it is your thing. Now, Pastor Jakes might help me you know, putting it together, but primarily it is my responsibility. That's what I'm paid to do. Are you with me? So that's what uh, you know. It's uh, the scriptures are saying, saying here that everyone works, everyone has their own responsibility, uh, and that they need to work towards. Okay. Okay. Uh, all right. Let's move on to the next section. There are fathers, mothers, sons, and daughters in the local church uh, family. Um,
Are you all okay? Okay. All right. So just like any household, the house of God will have fathers, mothers, sons, and daughters. Now this is again referring to the spiritual maturity uh, boundaries. Remember that. Uh, you know, in in John's first epistle, one John, he's referring to three different kind of groups: uh, little children, young men, and fathers. Okay. Um, so and all the references are there, so you can look at. We're not going to go through all of it. So, a uh, little children, young men, and fathers um, so he's referring to all of them three different kind of groups uh, in the household of God um, so how we relate to what we expect uh, and what we assign to people will differ based on their levels of spiritual maturity okay again so uh, with children if they do mistake we can tend to oversee isn't it we can forgive them uh, we, uh, their well-being is more important isn't it like they do one mistake, oh, it's okay. Sometimes you just like, why did you do this? Uh, but we make sure they get their food on time, they sleep on time, all of that, isn't it? But for a more mature adult, uh, accountability is high. Is it? Have you heard this statement that says, "With more power comes more responsibility. With great power comes great responsibility." <laughs> uh, it's, it's the same thing in our case as well. Okay, so as we grow. Uh, we are expected to grow. Grow is God's growing, and growth is God's idea. We've spoken about this, right, in the previous section. Uh, we, a baby grows, right. As we grow physically, we also grow spiritually, and we are expected to grow spiritually. And a lot of bad things happen. Like you, spiritually, if you become stagnant, uh, it's it just begins begins to attract a lot of unnecessary things. Like what happens in the stagnant water? Uh, yeah, it's not very healthy, isn't it? And so a river always needs to flow, right? Make sure, uh, and it's, and yeah, it's out of that all the beautiful thing happens. Okay, so in the in the household of church, uh, of God, we are all expected to work, and uh, and grow spiritually in spiritual maturity. And uh, another aspect on the house of God is a son mentality versus a servant mentality. Can anyone say what the difference? Paraphrase, summarize. What do you think? It's self-explanatory, this point. Son mentality versus servant mentality. So what kind of person will have, or the person with the son mentality, what will be their actions uh, versus the individual with a servant mentality? Uh, when it uh, comes to son mentality, it's like uh, he has this. This is mine. I have to take care of it. Mm -hmm. That stewardship he will have. Uh, he will have that accountability towards it, and uh, he does it. Uh, I have to do it. No other option. But he has a vision for it. He has like uh, he has that burden for it. He's like, okay, this is mine. I have to carry it. Correct. It's mine. He he has that kind of mental. When it comes to servant mentality, it's like they were forced to do. Mm. Like even if they are, if they don't want to do it, it's because they don't have another option. They have to do it it's like that. Then, and I think there is no life when it comes to doing in a servant. Servant mentality. Okay. All right. Thank you. Anybody else? Nina, I thought you wanted to. Similar. Okay. Anybody else? Yeah. Right. Correct. Yeah, it's very simple, isn't it? Again, so self-explanatory. So, an, an, a person with a uh, son mentality uh, is you do it because you love, isn't it? And we see that in the life of Jesus. The greatest example um, is time and time again in the from the Gospel of John. You read that I am not here to do my own will, uh, but my Father's. The words I say are not mine. But my father's the what I teach. My teachings are not mine, but my father's. Uh, right in scriptures after scripture, he says that what I'm here to do is not my own will. This is the son of God we are talking about. Who is the second head in the Trinity? It you know he can say that I'm here to do my will, and nothing could be wrong. Are you with me? Right. Uh, I'm. This is my teachings. Uh, you know, me and my dad put this together. <laughs> you know, uh, but then he loves his father so much that you know everything what he did he did with that identity of that he is a son, 
of the Most High, right? Versus the servant mentality. Oh, so we'll just look at a few uh, differences uh, so from the notes. John 8, 35, it says, A slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Beautiful, isn't it? A servant does work in the house for a reward, while a son does work in the house because he belongs. That is powerful, guys. Yeah. A servant's commitment can change and can leave one house to work in another house. A son is firm in his commitment. He knows where he belongs. A servant receives a reward for his work, his or her work, but a son receives an inheritance because he belongs. Woo. If it doesn't, if that point doesn't make you say amen, uh, I don't know what will. Uh, but, but look at that. Uh, you know, a servant receives a reward for the work, right? You get paid or what, whatever it can be, right? But a son receives the inheritance because he belongs. That is so powerful, beautiful, so divine. It's so full of kingdom. You know, again, when you read through Exodus to through Deuteronomy, um, you'll see. 12 different tribes getting different lands. Okay, for Dan, this is the land. For this one, you get this. For Judah, this is where you are, the south part and all of that. But when it came to Levites, what did God say? No. They will not get any of the pieces of land, anything, but I am their inheritance. Whew. That is... Yeah. It's just so powerful. Uh, and we have that, you know. So Levitical priesthood, right? They they represented the priesthood. But in First Peter chapter 2, we see that we are royal priesthood. Uh, and then that he is our inheritance. That means if he is our inheritance, that by default, we are his sons and daughters. And we have to function from that mentality. Not that, okay, if I do this, I will go to heaven and on the judgment day, <laughs> you know, if he asks what I, what you did, I will say, that I did all this in your name. Only to hear, I don't know who you are, please go away. <laughs> right? Um, so anything that we do, guys, uh, see, you know what, it is a possibility. Not it's a possibility. The reality is that uh, there will come a day, a time where you will not feel like working. Like, oh, man, I don't feel like leading worship today, like someone was saying. I don't feel I'm just kidding. This I didn't. I'm just saying, you know. I I mean, I'm just saying, you know, example. I it, it's normal, right? It's not that every day I wake up and I feel great to lead worship. He's like, yes. <laughs> you know, I woke up this morning, I couldn't get up, but I had to come, isn't it? You know, because uh, there's a responsibility. Uh, but we're not going to feel great all the time. But the point is that you find your way back. You keep finding your way back. You keep finding your way back. Your heart, your heart always stays connected, isn't it? Um, so yeah, that's uh, what a sun mentality is. You take a break you, when you have to, but then you come back, be plugged in. Okay. Some of the characteristics of the sons and daughters of the house demonstrate faithfulness, full of faith. That's what it is, right? They are faithful to the family. They stay aligned to the vision and the direction given. Right? Uh, see, faithfulness is uh, connected with if they are following directions of the vision. Right? They are not taking off as, like, okay, let me start my own para church kind of a thing. You know, okay, I have my own vision. That means you're not staying faithful to the calling. Uh, right? So demonstrate um, faithfulness, serve as sons and daughters. Uh, they are like minded with the vision and direction of the leadership of the house. Okay, they are like-minded. So uh, let's come down to that scripture down there. Uh, Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2, verse 19 to 22. It says, uh, actually, let's look at that verse 20. It says, for I have no one like-minded who will sincerely care for your state. I read that one more time, verse 20. For I have no one who is like-minded who will sincerely care for your state. Now that we've read that verse, let's read the verse before and after. Verse 19, but I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you shortly, that I also may be encouraged when I know your state. For, verse 21, for all seek their own, not the things which are of Christ Jesus. 
But you know his proven character. He's talking about whom? Timothy. But you know his proven character. That means his character has been tested and has been proven. That as a son with his father, he served with me in the gospel. You know, that, that should be a testimony that I, won't want, I would want to hear about all of us, at least all of you, 10, 15 years from now. You know, uh, if you say that you're on fire for God and I'm faithful to God now, I'm not too excited for you. I'll be very excited if I see you 15 years from now, 20 years from now, and saying, hey, Pastor, you know, uh, and then someone else testifies about you, and nothing else will make me proud, right? And this is the very proud moment for Timothy, isn't it? Uh, it's also a moment when you read Numbers chapter 12, where uh, God is talking on behalf of Moses to Aaron and Miriam. It's like, Aaron and Miriam, come forward. How dare you talk about a person? You know, other prophets I speak in visions and dreams, but whom I serve in Moses, I speak in, I speak to him face to face without any you know interpretation needed i speak plainly and he sees the form of the lord how then were you not afraid to speak of my servant moses? you know what i'm saying so god is testifying about moses paul is testifying something beautiful about timothy will you carry the same thing later so faithfulness goes a long way, demonstrating faithfulness, serving as sons and daughters in uh, in the house of God. Okay, uh, and then receiving correction with the good spirit. Receiving correction in the good spirit. Uh, please don't be offended when someone corrects you. Okay, it's a possibility uh, that that you can get offended. Uh, who are you to tell me I am wrong? Right. Uh, Correction is not received when your heart is full, filled with pride. Right? Uh, oh, please. Who are you teaching? You, you know, you know, my mom, you know, every now and then, uh, if she's cooking something, if I tell her to do something differently, you're teaching me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, Ma, not so much chili powder. It's like, oh, you're teaching me. You know, I raised you. Okay. So. <laughs> I know how much to put. I know to take care of my husband who is you know, kidding, but you get the point, isn't it? A correct, to have someone to correct you with good intentions is very special. We have to be blessed and privileged that someone actually cares about my well-being. Right? If I didn't care, I would I wouldn't bother correcting you. Right? And if it's again coming from a place that you want the best for the person, isn't it? Uh, in, in, in realistically as well, sportsmen, let's say Roger Federer, uh, you know, anybody who's great, they all have a coach. What is the responsibility of a coach? Is one of the responsibility of the coach is to correct their mistakes, isn't it? Uh, it's like, okay, hey, I think in this shot, it can be a little bit more better. Your straight drive is not straight enough. You get what I'm saying? Right? In all these major athletes, in when they retire, they will give a thanks to their coach. If it's not okay, if you're not a sports follower, then it's fine. Okay. <laughs> but uh, but you get what I'm saying, isn't it? Be very thankful that you have the someone who cares to give correct you. Uh, right. And even if if that correction doesn't come from a a good place, uh, don't be offended. Okay, offense is Satan's trap. I'll say that again. Being offended is a Satan's trap. And ministry, you will find there will be a lot of times where you will get offended. The chances will arise. But refuse to live a life uh, of not being offended. I just simply say, I choose not to be offended. Yeah, this what this person did and said hurt me, but I'm not going to carry it on. Offense is what you do after you're being hurt. You with me, right? Yeah. So I've hurt you. So you can't avoid being hurt. You can't walk around with this like, you know, don't hurt me kind of thing. So what you, how you respond after you're being hurt uh, is very important. So um, yeah, receive correction with good spirit. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you. Um, trust me, guys, ministry is, is challenging.
yeah, it's not easy. Um, you will have 10,000 people saying 10,000 different things. Uh, let God be your your defender. Yeah. All right. Uh, very quickly, let's move on. Um, honor father and mothers of the house. This section very talks about the story where Noah gets drunk. Apparently, uh, Noah was the first person to uh, discover wine. I'm like, I didn't know that. So, uh, huh? Sorry? I beg your pardon? Really? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I mean, because that, that's the claim. So he was the first person to get uh, discover wine. But anyways, so the story says that he got drunk. Maybe he didn't know what he was drinking. <laughs> and, oh, this grape juice is really nice, you know? Uh, Sounds got a zing to it. <laughs> Oh, uh, but then so here's what happened. Ham goes, one of his sons, Ham, he goes and sees, he sees his father's nakedness. Uh, and then he comes back and he talks to his brothers, while the other two brothers, Shem and Jepheth, go and cover him and walk backwards without seeing, right? So the one made fun. One wanted to spread the gossip. One wanted to spread the shame. One wanted to make the leader's mistakes big. While the other two wanted to cover it, help the leader, right? And so in that, so as leaders, right, we will do genuine mistakes, right? Um, <clears throat> but what, how you respond, again, is very important. Like, what are you willing to do to help your leader who's made a genuine mistake and who's willing to accept or take accountability for their, their actions? Isn't it? Um, so that's very important to, and that's how you honor your leaders uh, and father mothers is just a spiritual words. Um, and in closing, I just want uh, we'll skip a bunch, a few points, but because uh, <clears throat> other points are self-explanatory, and I'd like you to read it. Uh, at the bottom of page 64 in your PDFs, becoming family, developing community. Becoming family and developing community. Uh, tell me what's the difference between a community and a group of people? What is the difference between community and a group of people? Hmm, some things to do, come, it's like, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, talk to me, guys. It's okay, yeah. All right. Think, think. Francis. No, no, tell me. Okay, Francis. Uh, all right, then. Okay. Community, if I say like, uh, it's a group of people, like they can do whatever they want to do, like, no, you can do it. Like, it's a kind of people. Okay. If, uh, but community, come to community, no, like, you're saying community is a group of people. Yeah, it's, right. a, it's a group of people, but no. certain aim or. Yeah, hey, you're hitting the nail on the head. High five. <laughs> yeah. So, that, okay, anybody else want to say, Nikhil, you. I don't know where that came from, Francis, but that was amazing, bro. Community is like where people live out of families and uh, our, uh, like, uh, where people is live out of families mm. and relationship, like, uh, that way. Right. Where they can live together and uh, okay. where they can make that group. Right. They can do Yeah. Yeah, thanks, Nikhil. Yeah, I think, so... Yeah, you, there's so many different ways, aspects of looking at community, isn't it? So this is, let, let's say we can define community to a certain ethnicity group, ethnic group. We're like, okay, this is so and so, uh, you know, and this is a certain different community, you know, they belong to a certain ethnicity or a religious group, even for that matter. Um, but main the main difference between a group and a community is a, a group is just coming to chill, hang out, not no real aim or objective. There's no real objective. Maybe objective was to just come have pizza and watch a football game, you know, get together. But a community has an objective, right? 
a community has a goal or an objective mainly that's the thing so when we talk about uh developing a christian community what is it supposed to look like uh is it supposed to look like just the world any other world or whatever okay so from again from your notes um, page 65 in your pdfs a uh, christian community should look like uh where jesus is at the center where spiritual things are em emphasized spiritual growth is emphasized uh, where serving one another and loving one another in compassion is emphasized uh, encouraging one another is emphasized uh, you know all the good things of the kingdom is emphasized okay so a christian community is very simple christ is the center of it isn't it right if jesus is not the center of the christian community then it's just a title it's just another group uh, isn't it um, so towards the end it says what christian community is not okay christian community is not it's not a where a group of people would come together and watch an indecent movie well, is that anybody that the world group can do that right it, it looks very worldly right? it's not a christ centered community uh, what it is not it's you know we don't get together to just gossip all right guys let's get together we're going to talk smack about this person all right you start how much do you hate rin tell me on i'm just kidding you know <laughs> uh meetings like that can happen isn't it uh just you know the whole the sole goal of that and the purpose of that meeting is to talk everything what that person did you know get what i'm saying that's not what christian community is right it's not an escape from going out into all the world to make disciples now um so what we say christ centered community is like oh community 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 we'll come get, come together we'll play games we'll build fellowship i think but nobody's bothered about evangelism going out uh you know spreading the gospel you know so it's like almost like this is a license community christ centered is like a license to escape from evangelism atmainda <laughs> right it's not not an escape uh, from going out into all the world to make disciples and uh, not a substitute for true spiritual fellowship okay uh, we can talk more about community uh, probably the next year in youth ministry we'll speak about community <laughs> okay because this is a beautiful subject uh yeah so this is the house of god and let's let's quickly uh think about everything that we've covered today the house of god as a family of god uh from the first time we saw that how the house of god is mentioned in the bible genesis 28 oh wow, sure <laughs> sir i know the answer sir sir pick me sir <laughs> right yeah right prince <laughs> Cool. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So, uh, yeah. Don't forget that uh, the house of God, like what is mentioned in Genesis 28, is it was gate of heaven, right? It's a like ladder that connects two realities, right? Uh, where as angels ascending and descending is not a big deal. <laughs> Imagine that, you know? Like, oh, hey, hey, hi. Okay, bye. Yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, yeah. It should usher people in from one reality into another. That is into the reality of God. that's his heart right uh, and and jacob realizes that and he calls that a place the house of god when there is no building he saw something and he realized something that we you know that we are struggling to understand these days okay uh, three impo important implications a proper way to conduct yourself boundaries and a family has a culture it is very important um for your ministries to have a certain culture three important family practices in a local church walk in sure oh yeah yes. walk in brotherly love keep the unity fellowship of the spirit everyone works son mentality versus the servant mentality characteristics of sons and daughters of the house that demonstrate faithfulness uh, receive corrections in good spirit uh, protect your leaders okay there's a book by pastor ashish uh, apc publication called uh, how to help your pastor it's such a beautiful book uh, it's what 20 pages long or 25 pages max so uh, yeah 
your pastors also need help okay once in a while message your pastors and ask how they are doing <laughs> okay so that's about it guys for today i will stop i know we were just uh, stopping a little early but then there's enough information content for today so yeah yeah nina i see you have you raised your hand uh may i i'm i'm not texting is it okay if i speak can you hear me okay yeah okay uh just that a little bit of clarity on the servant and son uh thing because on on the one hand we always talk i mean even even jesus himself mm -hmm. says he came not to be served but to serve yes and uh, paul also refers to himself as a even a bonded slave yeah so from that point of view uh, in the yes. house they said that you don't shouldn't i mean you need to have a son son mentality is okay knowing who you are in him and yes that way but i mean why is there that i mean the kind of since there's a lot of a lot that is said about yes. having being you know uh, reducing yourself to nothing unless even yes. when the disciples came and they said unless you really he uh, exalts himself will be humbled then yes. humbled himself yes. will be exalted yeah so just yes. wanted a little clarity on that sure uh, yeah i'll share what i understood so when we're talking about the son mentality and servant mentality it's really talking about your thinking like your identity um, but work still needs to be done right and so uh, now you can do the work with a servant mentality that means you can serve one another because you've been assigned a certain uh, responsibility and you may not really feel like right uh, so you know i can set up the chairs uh, you know saying okay you know i have to set it up it's a sunday come in uh okay at the end of it they'll put biryani uh, you know so that's you you are serving you are doing the work but with a different intention with a different mentality versus the son mentality is i want to get to the house of god you know i want to arrange the chairs because i will not get to arrange chairs in heaven i will get to fold cables because i will not get to fold cables in heaven right you know i do it with that joy with that and i treat every opportunity that i get as an honor so because i love him and and especially this is the house of god and i want to take care of my father's house really well and so work is still getting done but how you do it uh, is what matters so uh, this is very famous quote uh, and it's always impacted me it says uh, rule with the heart of a servant and serve with the heart of a king i'll say that again okay rule with the heart of a servant and serve with the heart of a king so uh, serving never stops how you serve is what matters so i hope that made sense nina <laughs> okay All right. Well, thank you. Thanks for joining in, guys. So we'll uh, connect again next week. All right. God bless you. Have a good one. Thanks for joining in, everyone online. Take care. Have a blessed day.